right, what we're looking at here is 3.1, the nature of exponential growth. Properties of exponential growth functions uh, include as the independent variable increases by a constant amount, the dependent variable increases by a common factor. And we're going to look at examples in exponentials with respect to a table, with respect to the graph, and you're going to see that basically when we look at something that's a growth function, as you move from left to right, so as the x increases, you'll notice that the y values increase. And in a table of values, you're going to see that increases by a common factor. So that's something we're going to see in this unit. So that's something to look forward to. All right, next. The graph increases at an increasing rate. So when we're looking at here, we have something called an asymptote, okay, which is a dotted line down across the bottom. And this asymptote is basically a, a, an imaginary line which the graph doesn't touch. When we sketch a graph of an exponential function, we actually sketch the asymptote. But if we were to use graphing technology, a lot of graphing technology doesn't, doesn't show the actual asymptote. So it's assumed that there is one when we see one. So an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches but does not touch. So here we go. Look, an example of increasing, so we're from moving from left to right, the y values are increasing at, a cons at an increasing rate. So as you move forwards, it's moving faster and faster, increasing. So this is an increasing exponential function or also known as exponential growth. Now, Example one, determine the type of function. Justify your reasoning. So here we go. Looking at a table of values, we're going to justify the type of function we're looking at. So this first example, you'll notice you have a table. The very first thing you have to do is check if the x's go in a pattern. If the x's do not go in a pattern, you, have, you cannot determine the type of function based on the table itself. You have to do a little bit more investigation. So if the x's do not go in a pattern, you would actually write unable to determine. But let's see if these x's go in a pattern. How do we do that? We actually have to write how it changes. So the change in x, also known as delta. Delta means the change. And what are we checking the change in? The change in the x. How are the x's changing? So we're going to go from here to here, from 2 to 4. What is, how did the numbers change? Well, they changed by going plus 2. And again, from 4 to 6, plus 2. 6 to 8, plus 2. And 8 to 10, that's right, folks, plus 2. What do you notice about all these numbers in delta x? Again, that's correct. We notice that all the values are the same. Because these values are the same, it gives us permission now to go on the other side. Now we're looking at delta y. Delta Y is how are the Y's changing? Well, they're going down 5, down 7, down 9, and again down 11. So, are these the same? No, they're not. So, what does that mean? Well, we have to keep going. We now have to delta the delta Y. So, delta, delta Y. We're checking the change in the change in Y. And we're seeing that these numbers are going down 2, down 2, and down 2. What do you notice in delta delta y? That's right, the values are the same. Now, you have, you've been studying this now for three years. In grade 9, we looked at linear. In grade 10, we looked at quadratics. And in grade 11, we're looking at exponential. At this point in time, what we're looking at is here, the delta deltas are the same. That means that, therefore, this table represents a quadratic form function or quadratic, yes, yeah, sorry, a quadratic function because the delta x and the delta delta y's have the same values. Now, we're not talking about the numbers here, folks. What we mean here is all the numbers are the same in delta x and all the numbers are the same in delta delta y. That has n each together have nothing to do with each other. So this turns out to be a quadratic function. And remember, all quadratics have an x squared in it. Well, notice that it's delta delta y. So two deltas imply that there must be a square on the actual algebraic 
uh, equation. That's kind of neat. Let's move forwards to another one. So we're looking at another table here, folks. Here we go. And this table, again, we look at the values. Always do delta x first, and you notice that it's going down 4 each time. So the values are the same. If they weren't the same, you would say unable to determine. They are the same, so we now move across to the other side, delta y. And guess what, folks? We change, find the change in the y's. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. Oh, lo and behold, it's plus 5 all the way across. And those values are the same. So we now have delta x's are the same. We have delta y's are the same. And guess what, folks? Because of that, that says that this table represents a linear relation or a linear function because delta x and delta y are the same. So what does that mean? These values have the same, are the same in delta x and the delta y's are the same as well. All right, one more example. Here we go. This is a table and notice right away the x's are going in a weird way. Does that mean we can unable to determine? Mm -mm -mm. That's right. We can't say unable to determine because these are just random points listed. We have to actually rewrite these points in some sort of order and logic. So we're going to write them all out, each of these values. Okay, and once we order all the table, we put it in order from least to greatest. Now remember, these are the x's, and the y's, the corresponding y's, follow the same x. So again, negative 2 followed with 5, negative 5, and then 1 followed with negative 3, 13 followed with negative 1, 61 followed with 1, and 253 followed with 3. So we do all of this. Now we do delta x. And lo and behold, that's right, the delta x values are the same. Now that's a lot of information there. Let's move a little bit backwards, just so that you don't have that little bit of sticker shock there, folks. Just hold on. So we notice that all these values are the same. So what we're going to do now is go over to delta y. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to now do delta y. And we find out these are the numbers for delta y. All right, so we know it's not linear. So we prove. Now let's see if it's quadratic. And lo and behold, folks, it is not the same there. But I'm going to tell you that although it's not linear and not quadratic, it is one other type of function. But you need to figure out what the pattern is. So we're going to stop here for a second and go back to the definition we had in the beginning. The definition in the beginning said that the graph increases at an increasing rate. As the independent variable increases by a constant amount, the dependent variable increases by a common factor. So let's go back to that previous to the next screen. Okay, we're on that other screen, folks, and we have delta delta y. And what you do now is look at these numbers and see, is there a pattern? Or maybe look at these numbers and see, is there a pattern? Because the same pattern in here would be the same pattern here. Do you see it? Oh, I think someone does. That's right. The pattern here is multiplied by 4. So that is our common factor. It is a number that's multiplied by 4. And in fact, these numbers are also multiplied by 4. These numbers are multiplied by 4. These ones are multiplied by 4. So if you saw the pattern in delta y, you could automatically say, what is that though? That is not delta delta y. That is not even triple delta y. That's actually just a common factor. This table represents an exponential function because delta x values are the same and delta y or delta delta y have the same product, has the same product. So again, the numbers multiply to give you that value, it has a common factor. All right, looking at another one, example two, you have to identify the equations as linear, quadratic, or exponential. Looking at the following, let's see what they are. Here they are, all three. Linear, quadratic, exponential, and folks, 
those are what they are. Why is that the case? Well, the first one has the highest exponent on the x is a 1. Delta x is the same, 1 delta, 1 exponent, exponent 1, degree 1, must be linear. This one, the highest exponent on the x, is x squared, is a 2, so second, and second delta, um, so when we looked at second differences, remember in grade 10 was called second differences, the 2 here implies that it must be quadratic. And finally, this last one is exponential. Well, look at where the x is. The x itself is the exponent, so that's exponential. All right, so here's a couple of another example just taken from what we look at in, our, in the textbook. And we say match the following graphs with the equations. How do you match graphs with equations? Well, you need to match the equation first. So obviously this is a parabola, find the equation that's a parabola. This is a line, find the equation that represents a line. And then when we're looking at these four, what you can do is plug in values to figure it out. So you plug in a 0 for the x, and then you plug in a 1 for the x to get that one, and those should give you those values. So again, 0 for the x, and a 1 for the x, and that should pretty much narrow down which of these represent which graph. So you plug in values. here Now if I, what I recommend you do is pause the video now and see if you can play matching and then I will re reveal the answers. Pause the video now. Alright, you're back. Great. Here are your answers. So the line, the quadratic, the ex different exponentials. Again, how do you find the answers? You plug in 0 and 1 for x into the equation and find the y value. So f at 1 and f at 0 to get the answers if you want to think of function notation. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a great evening. Have a numerical day. Take care.